So you're ready to start creating websites. It's natural to ask, what software do I need to buy in order to do this? The answer is you don't need to buy any software. We'll talk a little bit more detail about that later on. But there are some things you can do to set up your computer uh, to make it a little more easy to create web uh, sites. And so we're going to go through a one change you can make to your operating system, uh, or the way you view files on your computer, and three pieces of software um, that will make your job a little bit easier. I'm going to be using for these series of uh, videos uh, this computer, which is based on Vista. Um, however, uh, a lot of these are, are very similar to set up across, and I'll talk about both the Mac platform and the piece, uh, Windows platform um, in this video. Again, I'll be using Windows uh, for my demos, um, but uh, you'll find that there are a very large number of Mac users out there um, uh, among design companies and, and web design uh, and production uh, studios. So uh, it's good to get some, uh, if, you're, if you're a complete Mac person, you should at least have some versatility in, in a Windows environment. If you've only used Windows, you should definitely take some time and become familiar uh, with, one, with Mac OS. Um, so that you could kind of go between the two without too much difficulty. So let's start with the, the first piece here, which is making um, files on your desktop look a little bit different. Uh, by default, both the PC and the Mac generally hide the extensions of a file name. So, for example, on a Mac you can do um, Apple I and look for the information about a file and it will tell you the true name of that file or you can right click on a PC and it will tell you the real name of that file. The real name includes something after the dot. So for example something or other dot doc or something or other dot txt. The dot txt and the dot doc are part of the file name but the operating systems don't show you what those are. That can be really inconvenient if you um, need to manipulate the extensions on a file. So it's a good idea to to not hide those, to show those extensions. In Windows, you can do that by um, opening up, and it's a little bit different depending on which version of Windows you're looking at, open up Computer or My Computer, and um, you can look under, on Vista, Organize, um, Folder and Search Options. We want to click on View in there, and we'll see here that I have this one unclicked, Hide Extensions for Known File Types. You want to make sure that that particular option is unclicked and that you are not hiding extensions for known file types. For Mac, uh, you need to go into the Finder and it's actually a little bit quicker. You go to the Finder Preferences and you indicate there that you want to be able to see the extensions for all your files. Again, this isn't vital, you can do without it, but it'll make your life a lot easier and will, um, especially when you're starting out, will uh, prevent some early confusion when you think you've named a file something and it's actually named something else. So that's the one little change. Uh, as I said, I want you to download three free pieces of software. The first of these, if you aren't already using it, is Firefox. I have Firefox loaded on this machine now, um, but um, if you go to Get Firefox, um, you'll be able to download uh, the Firefox browser. Um, why Firefox? Why develop in Firefox? There are other lots, lots of other good browsers out there, and I actually use another browser very frequently. Um, but when I'm developing for the web, uh, I use Firefox. Uh, one of the reasons for this is that it's a standard kind of it, it, it. The rendering of HTML is done in a standard way. It is not, at least at present, the most popular browser. I don't think anyone's measuring it as that. Right now, Internet Explorer, in its various versions, is still the most popular browser out there. And that means you can't ignore Internet Explorer. And when you design a site, you have to make sure it works in Explorer as well as in Firefox. But usually you do that by creating it for Firefox first, which is a more standards-based browser and then tweaking it so that it will appear in the various versions of Internet Explorer. This is a pain, but it is much easier than designing something for Internet Explorer and then realizing that it's non-standard and won't work on any other browser. So the best way to go is from Firefox to another. Why Firefox, which has a rendering, agent, a rendering engine that's actually shared among a number of browsers, um, because it also has a nice plugin structure and some plugins that are very helpful. There's probably a dozen plugins that would be very helpful for doing web development, but I'm going to ask you for sure to do um, two of them. Uh, one of those is uh, a uh, 
a plugin called Firebug. Firebug allows you to see, and you can go to Get Firebug to do this. Do that once you've installed Firefox, and then all you have to do is click on Install, and it'll install into your browser. And what happens is it puts this little bug down in the lower right-hand corner, and when you click on that, you can see a great deal about kind of what's going on on the page. You can see the, the code, which you can do by seeing view source on, on any page anyway. But it allows you to kind of explore the CSS um, and uh, look through the site and see what's driving what and make changes on the page. <clears throat> the other uh, plugin I'm going to ask you to, to bring in is something called the uh, an HTML validator. What this does is allows you to check and make sure the code for whatever page you're looking at is actually a valid valid HTML code. And we can click on this and see um, that, of course, on this particular page, everything is valid. Uh, the second piece of software I'm going to recommend, and this differs uh, a little bit from PC and to, to Mac, is uh, a, a uh, an FTP client. An FTP client will allow you to use file transfer protocol and move files from your computer up to a web host, up to a, a server, and from the server back to your computer as well. And so you need some sort of a client to do that. If you go to FileZilla, you'll see that there's a free client. This is a very good client that I use for FTP. Um, and you can download it for Windows. I will warn you that for Mac, it's important that you pay very close attention to the version numbers. So if you are using, say, OS 10.2, or OS 10.4, you need to download a different version of FileZilla for it to work, otherwise it just won't work. If you're having trouble with that, um, you can also download uh, uh, um, another FTP client called CyberDuck, uh, if you like. There are a number of free FTP clients out there. If you have one that you prefer to the others, go for it. But if you haven't used one before, I would strongly recommend FileZilla as being very flexible and uh, a robust choice. Finally, I want you to use the text editor. Now, um, both uh, Windows and PCs, uh, Windows and Macs, come with the text editor as part of the operating system. Mind you that a text editor is different than a document editor. A document editor allows you to do formatting and all sorts of odds and ends. And when it saves the file, it saves it with a lot of stuff in it, a lot of junk in it, not just the text you've entered. A text editor saves only the text, and that's really important for all the work that we'll be doing. So you need to use a text editor. Um, now, uh, the built-in editor on, on the Mac actually can be adjusted so that it saves just text. Um, and if you look at the book, it'll give you some instructions on how to do that. Um, I tend to use uh, a free uh, editor for the Mac called Text Wrangler and Text Wrangler uh, by default saves everything as plain text. On the PC, again, you have Notebook, which is you know, under Accessories in your Start menu. Uh, but a Notebook is fine, and you can do everything you need to do in Notebook. But I would recommend you download a free Notebook replacement, or I'm sorry, I'm saying Notebook, but I mean Notepad. A free Notepad replacement, back up a little bit there. Uh, in Windows, it's called Notepad. Um, and I use Notepad++. There's another one out there called Notepad2. Both of those are free replacements to Notepad. Why use these instead of Notepad? Well, it does some nice things for when you're writing in HTML. It colors the text so that you can see um, what the pieces of the HTML are, and that makes it much easier to actually write using HTML and using in a text editor, um, or CSS, the same deal. Um, and it also has line numbers. <laughs> which seems like a silly thing, but is very useful when you have large projects to be able to track down to a particular line. All right, thank you very much. Uh, let me know in the comments if you have any uh, problems or questions with the process. Uh, see you next time.